Okay, our next example in chapter two, uh, the problem statement's given below, and it's a uh, cute little problem to try and help us practice both writing scripts um, and then learning more about variable assignments. Okay. So the example reads, write a few lines of code that swap the values of x and y, put your code in a script called swap, uh, and test it. Okay, and so what we want to look at is, you know, the value of x is initially five, the initial value of y is six, and we want to be able to run our code so that in the end, x has a value of six assigned to it and y has a value of five, okay? Um, so let's do it, okay? First thing is, you'll notice my solution from uh, Fibonacci is still up, okay? And so remember, if I want to first delete all these variables that are currently stored in my workspace, command is clear variables, and if I want to clear my command window, Command is CLC. Okay, so uh, let's do it. Let's create a new uh, script. Okay, and we're told to call this swap. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is call it swap. Okay, excellent. Okay, and so um, let's start by providing some documentation. Okay, so the purpose of swap is um, swap the values assigned to x and y. Okay. So in terms of preconditions, um, x and y will have to have values assigned to them. Um, and the post condition, x and y with swapped values. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do? So if I come down to my command window, and we start with, say, x equals 5, and then y is equal to 6. Okay, and one little trick I don't know if I mentioned before is, remember, semicolon suppresses output, uh, also corresponds to the end of a statement, so I could do, you know, multiple assignments or put multiple statements uh, on a single line uh, with that notation. Okay, so x is a value of 5 assigned to it, y is a value of 6. I'm going to write this script so that when I run it, x is going to have a value of 6 assigned to it, and y is going to have a value of 5. Okay, so um, first let's do it the wrong way, um, and then mention why it's wrong, and go from there. So the first thing that might be tempting to do is, well, if I want the final value of x to be equal to uh, what's you know stored to y, I could do you know x equals y, and then I want y to have what's assigned to x, so then y is equal to x. So if I run swap, okay, we'll get the x equals 6 and y equals 6. Okay, that's not right. What went wrong? Well, the issue is, okay, so if I look at line 6 here, okay, this is a variable assignment. And so what this is doing is, if I first look at the right-hand side, it's going to take the current value of y and assign that to the target x. Okay, So if I started with a y value of 6, x will now have a value of 6. On the next line, I start with the right-hand side. Okay, This is a variable assignment. So if I look at the right-hand side, it's going to take the current value of x and assign that to the target of y. Okay, And so this is actually you know, the new current value of x, which we just computed on line 6. Okay, so variable assignments could be a little more confusing um, because it's not quite a uh, mathematical expression that you're used to. And you know, how you should think of them is if you look at the equal sign, look at whatever is on the right-hand side, and MATLAB will first compute that with whatever current values of those variables it has. And then it'll take that result after that calculation and assign it to that target. Right? So then x would have that value. Okay, so that's not good. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, and we'll have x equals 5 and y equals 6. And then let's update this. Okay, um, one way I might do this is well, let's um, store the original value of x. So let's create a variable, say x uh, old. Okay, and x old is going to be what's currently assigned to x. So now when I take, um, you know, what was line, what's line seven now, OK? 
Okay, I could take the current value of y and I could assign that to x. So x will get a new value. Then in line 8, okay, what I want to be assigned to y at the end of the calculation is what was originally stored at x. Okay, so x old. So now if I run this command, or this swap, okay, I correctly get that now x is equal to 6 and y is equal to 5. Right? The values have been correctly swapped. Okay? Cool. Excellent. Okay? Now a couple more notes on this. Okay? So here I just had uh, one uh, kind of intermediate or maybe called the burner variable x old, right? And you know what I mean by this burner variable or intermediate variable is it's a variable that was needed to perform the calculation, but at the end of the day I don't care about it when the calculation's all said and done. Okay, so I only needed one because only one is uh, in theory needed to swap values. But it may be uh, as you're just getting started out and you're starting to sharpen your logic skills um, that this wasn't exactly clear to you. Okay, so one note is if you need to create more intermediate variables to make the co uh, code more readable and understandable to you, by all means do it. Okay. First and foremost, we want your code to be bug free. So whatever you can do to eliminate mistakes, or minimize mistakes, do it, even if your code doesn't look quite as streamlined or as efficient uh, as a professional might, okay? So if I had to create an y old variable to store the original value of y, I could do it. And then I know I'd want the final value of x to be the original value of y and then the final value of y to be the original value of x. Okay, and so if I run this swap, okay, then they're going to be swapped back to the original values of 5 and 6. Okay, so, you know, adding an extra line, if it makes your code more understandable uh, to you, by all means, do it. Okay, excellent. Uh, the one last note I'll make is remember, when I run a script, it's as if I had executed all of those lines in the script one by one in my command window. So it may be that after I run the script, right, I know what the preconditions are, x and y. I know that it's um, after I run the script, I'm going to have assigned to x and y, you know, swapped original values of x and y. But maybe I'm not necessarily aware or expecting there to be intermediate variables. Uh, and maybe I don't want those lingering around in my command window. Okay. Uh, if that's the case, you can clear them. Uh, once you're done with them. So if I just clear y old and x old, okay, what'll happen is when I run my script, okay, y old and x old no longer exist uh, once all is said and done. Okay, that's not necessary, um, but uh, as you get larger programs and if you find yourself using lots of common intermediate variable names in your scripts, uh, might be something that you want to do. Eventually we'll just write functions. Uh, and the functions will, you know, obviate this need um, altogether. Uh, one final note is, um, in terms of comments, um, I didn't add any comments uh, in this code. Um, but again, um, if it makes your code more readable and understandable, by all means, add them. So maybe in this case, I would want to start by saying, okay, let me minimize this, that oh, original. Um, so storing original values of x and y to variables x old and y old, right? Okay, and then swapping values. Okay, so if adding comments like that uh, makes your code more readable and understandable, uh, uh, do it. Okay. What I often tell students to think about when they're writing comments is, you know, imagine you write this uh, script or function uh, now, and um, you want to be able to use it a year from now. So your comments and documentation uh, should be enough so that you could, you know, dust it off a year from now, understand what you did, uh, how it works, and be able to use it. Uh, one other thing. Um, so if I click on variables, it'll show me all the places they pop up in the editor, which is in the other editor, which is pretty nice. Uh, you'll also see that it underlines this equal sign, okay, in my variable assignment, and all that's saying is um, you didn't suppress the output, um, and it's just a note; it's not a warning. 
uh, everything will run. Okay, in this case I didn't suppress it because that's the desired result uh, I want at the end.